Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are signaling Satan. Eight. Satanite. It's a uh, refractory cement. Uh, no, today we are actually going to get into Satanite. The next few days are supposed to be lovely. Uh, I am stoked, honestly. It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. I've been waiting for this moment for way too freaking long. Can I just say that? Can I get that out of the way? If you don't know me, my name is Steven and uh, I'm building a forge. Uh, last video you saw, hopefully, <laughs> if you didn't, card in the upper corner, uh, I made and finished my forge table. That is a table, a stand, whatever you want to call it, that my forge goes on top of so that it's at a decent height for me to put things in and pull things out of. Uh, today, we're actually going to make the forge that goes on top of it viable? Technically, um, th this Satanite stuff goes on in two coats. So the first coat here is going to be uh, just the preliminary. It's not the end all be all. It is one of two steps, potentially three, but one of two steps really, because the third one is repair uh, as it cracks and splits, which it will do because this is the, the liner of the forge is a uh, consumable uh, resource. So what we need is a bucket, some uncomfortably warm water, a bag just in case, because I imagine that this is going to get messy. I'd like to measure things out perfectly if possible. A food scale uh, I've got on hand. This will be uh, helpful. You've seen this before, hopefully, when we weighed out everything we needed to, and I weighed it out wrongly for the rigidizer for the wool, uh, the uh, wool, uh, thermal wool that goes inside of the forge beforehand. Uh, and I've got all of the refractory that I need for this phase. I also have the instructions here, um, which I've read a number of times, but um, there's, there's a lot there and it's hard to remember it all. So I will be referring to the instructions. Uh, if you're curious about what forge this is, uh, once again, as I've said in the past in videos, uh, I'm not sponsored by them, but this is the Mr. Volcano Hero 2 Forge. It has two burners, and it comes with all the steps and everything you need to know about building your forge the way that it's meant to function. <laughs> uh, if you happen to hear any screaming or whatever that is, uh, if you happen to hear any kids screaming or going wild or anything like that, be aware, it's expected, it's understood. Uh, we have a four-year-old and a two-year-old and the two-year-old just got up from a nap and he wants to make sure that the whole world knows that he's ready to make it your problem. So just as a heads up, uh, you might hear some, uh, some, young, some young children screaming in the background. So that being said, we have this lovely uh, first step, which is uh, the idea is to mix and apply in two layers. When preparing to mix the Satanite Refractory, make sure to measure both with a scale. Do not guess. Mix for five minutes, look for a sour cream consistency. Satanite Refractory, 2.25 pounds. Water, 9.94 fluid ounces. That'll be 10.37 ounces in weight. So, Let's just do a, a real quick maths check. I'll grab my, uh, my handy dandy scale and it is going to be aimed at me so it may be hard for you to see, but my numbers are right here, hopefully. Um, so the first one is going to be 12 ounces, 1.95, that is 2.63. I'm guessing that's what that is, 2.63. Um, it says do not guess, but we're supposed to go two and a quarter pound. I'm dumb, I'm dumb, I apologize. It is 36 ounces for 2.25 pounds. That makes sense, right? So, yeah, three of the 12 ounce bags should be exactly what we need for this coat. I'm gonna trust 
their measurements, uh, I'm going to need 9.94 fluid ounces of water. So, I don't have an incredibly accurate scale. I've got 9.5 ounces. That put me at 9.4 ounces and I was at 9.5. I imagine that that puts me close enough. I don't have something that's gonna measure 9 point, Oh wait, no, I need 9.94, not 9.4. <laughs> this is why we double check. 9 point. That, see, that's that's too much. Yeah, I just I can't have that. That's that's just too much water. We're gonna take out capfuls at a time. We're gonna call that good. That's 9.9 .9 ounces of water, right? 9.9 .9 ounces of water. Uh, it says 9.10. Um, in the interest in the interest of science, we'll call that good. 9.9. .9, it was at 9.10. Or 9.10, wow, Steven, come on. It was at 10 ounces, it's not any longer. So it's gonna say 10 now, of course, because I moved it, but it was at 9.9. .9. So that's gonna be just fine for the amount of water. Now I have 32 ounces here, or I'll have 32 ounces of uh, prime real estate. No, uh, 32 ounces of the Satanite refractory. Uh, I've got some gloves, I've got this bucket, and here's the thing. I'm really nervous right about now. Uh, I'm honestly super nervous because this, once you start, you don't stop until it's done, done, done. So uh, I do need my respirator on because this stuff, once it's in a place, it's in a place and I'm hoping it doesn't destroy my camera equipment. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear me through all of this. Check my mask for any, any spiders or anything like that. That would not be a fun time. So far, it looks like I'm doing pretty well here. All right, so essentially what I've done is I've got water in here. It says that with a spray bottle, spray water to wet the surface of the rigid ceramic fiber blanket. Any dry spots on the blanket will absorb the water from the refractory mixture too fast and cause cracks. Too much water will prolong the drying step. So, I've got my mixture water here. I've got gloves here. And I've got my forge right here. You're not gonna be able to see a ton of this, I apologize, but I'm trying with, the best, with, with what I've got, okay? I definitely wanna err on the side of too wet, honestly. Any dry spots in the blanket will absorb the water from the refractory mixture too fast and cause cracks. Like, okay, well, what, what do you consider too wet? Y'all over at Mr. Volcano need to tell us what too wet is. Apply the mixture using a brush to cover all exposed surfaces of the blanket. What? I don't have a brush, I don't think. Well, I might. Like, what does that mean? Like, apply it with a brush. I can't think of a single brush that this would go on easily with. I've gone through a decent amount of water. I think we're pretty damp here. I think we should be okay. But it's time to start mixing the refractory. And I have the respirator on specifically for the pouring of the refractory because I don't want to breathe it in, right? Like, that would be worst case scenario right there. Uh, I think my knife is over here. Uh, 
I know you can probably see that dust coming off of there. That's the exact stuff I want to avoid breathing in. Probably leave those some sort of like mesothelioma or something like that. Last bag. I'm looking for a sour cream consistency here, they say, but this already feels, or this, this feels thicker than any sour cream I've ever eaten, but maybe it's just not mixed enough yet. Might be some latent moisture here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but it's uh, it's pretty gloopy. I guess that's about the consistency of sour cream, maybe. Like maybe an artisanal sour cream or something like that, I don't know. Is that even a thing? We make Dijon <laughs> sour cream. <laughs> Uh, I love sour cream for the record, but the idea of like a Dijon or like a bougie soured product, like dude, y'all already have cheese, you already have wine, let the sour cream people be. I'm just saying, like sour cream gate, maybe it's a thing. This is looking pretty good actually. This has some staying power. I, I could trust this to stay up in my forge, I think. I think we're ready to apply. It says to apply with a brush. My hand is the brush. And my, my mind is the artist. So we're going to take this. Okay. Yeah, use a brush to cover all exposed surfaces of the blanket. So the idea here is really just that we're going to put this in. Oh, baby. I can't see it all that well at the moment. But the idea is that we're just going to put it in like that, make this happen. So you're not going to be able to see a ton of this. I apologize again. Um, but there's, there's really not a whole lot to see. I'll try to get some pictures or something like that afterward. I say that a lot as well. But... Um, it is really hard for me to get a good angle on this. We're gonna, we're gonna pack some around this edge here. You might be able to see some of that, but there we go. Try to get all exposed edges of the blanket. I recently spoke about my work situation and uh, some of the, the trials and tribulations of trying to get a promotion in a space where uh, I've been misrepresented for quite a while by, by specifically one person. Um, they, they were my manager for a while. They aren't anymore. Um, but they, uh, they misrepresented me really badly, and it left a really soured taste in my mouth. Not to come back to the whole sour cream thing, you know. Um, but they, they left a pretty significantly soured, uh, flavor in my mouth. Uh, can I, I think I'm good at this point. Uh, shoot. Hopefully that's not too big of an issue. We'll set you right there. How's that sound? Sounds pretty good. Oh, get that wretched thing off my face. 
Ooh, I didn't think this through. Putting, uh, oops. Put you over there. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to just scrap this glove all together, which is fine. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's really hard making a name for yourself when you've got poor representation, right? Like surprisingly difficult. Of course, my hands are now sweaty and wetty. So this is gonna go real well. Um, but it is, it's difficult. And, and trying to, I don't know, trying to prove that you're worth the effort, it's not an easy thing. Thankfully, my team does tend to trust me quite a bit for the most part. A big part of me, which you probably know, but maybe you didn't, is I tend to be a pretty emotional person. Uh, I tend to, uh, tend to, I don't wanna say fly off the handle, but I tend to take things a little bit more to heart that maybe were not meant or not intended to be that way. And not everybody really knows how to handle that. Um, my, my, some of my coworkers are a little bit less, uh, I don't want to say less empathetic, but they, they don't they don't feel to the same extent that I do, which I don't expect that anybody does, honestly. But it can be it can be a trial when you're trying to have a heartfelt conversation with somebody about how frustrated you are, and they just they don't they understand the frustration, they don't understand the expression of the frustration, and so they they try to console you and, and help you along, which I wholeheartedly recognize and appreciate, but they don't, they are quite obviously awkward and it detracts from what they intend. It detracts from them trying to comfort you uh, because they just, they just don't have that capacity or they just don't, they don't recognize what that, that kind of capacity is or what it takes, you know? Um, and so, I've tried over, especially the last few months, but I've tried really hard to try to, uh, to try to curb, not, not my emotions, but my expression of my emotions in such a, uh, such a drastic way. I try to, uh, uh, try to be a little bit more tactful so that people can understand Yes, I am still upset. Yes, I am very frustrated. Yes, this is not fixed and nothing has changed, but you need to know, or you, you need to know that I am frustrated and I'm upset with it. However, it is not the end of the universe. <laughs> I have uh, historically gotten real, real salty about things very, very easily. And that's not the best way to go about it, but it's kind of part of who I am. And I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to stop saying, woe is me, uh, all these problems, this sucks, this is Armageddon. Uh, and I, I'm trying to start saying things like, okay, yes, this is bad, but how can we go about fixing it? How can we make this productive? How can we take these emotions and stop them from being debilitating and instead use them as a driving force. You know, it's a, it's a redirection thing, a, a redirection of energy uh, that I, you know, I've spent the last 20 years not doing, uh, 20 plus years, honestly. Um, and, and so to, to take it on and to try to make myself kind of convey that message when that's not at all who I've been for most of my life, um, that's, it's hard. It's, it's real hard. Um, it's completely retraining my brain to handle things in, in a way that I've never handled things before. I think our edge is looking okay here. Got a couple of little, little bits that need to be tidied up. There's that. I'm trying to use the clean part of my hand to, to scrape the excess away that's building up on the outside as I force this all through. Let's move 
that. My hope is that I'll be able to get this side done from edge to center. And then I'll move over to the other side and hopefully make that the, make, make the same changes. I wanna make sure I'm getting up underneath of there though. That's, uh, that's gonna be a little bit of a problem area otherwise, because there's an obvious lip there. Make sure we don't have any pink really showing through. Pink being the, uh, the fiber blanket underneath. I do a little bit of sliding here. Apply, hopefully relatively smoothly. I can tell why cracking would occur because this blanket is moving just a little bit. Okay, we'll take the clean glove, try to wipe that away. Is that a spot from the blanket? Probably. Uh, what I'll probably end up doing is I'll go over this once for this first coat, make it clean, make it right, and then I'll probably pack in a little bit more in the areas that I feel or that I'm concerned about. Um, my roof here, I need to, oops, ooh, yeah, I'm gonna have to be careful of that. I don't want refractory in the burner area. I need to clear that out, make sure that that is adequately, adequately addressed. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm working to better myself professionally. Uh, not always the easiest thing to do, um, especially when you're riding the coattails of, of thinking you were gonna get a promotion or, or being told that you were gonna get a promotion and then being told, ah, we just don't think you're ready. Um, and, uh, you know, honestly, probably wasn't, uh, probably am not um, from a domain point of view. My frustration comes in with that, with the domain argument, you know, where you don't quite know enough about the company code base that we would prefer you have. Um, my, my issue with that is they're, they're hiring brand new senior developers um, that have never touched our code base before. Uh, and they don't have the domain knowledge. How, how does that make it any different for me? But what it does do is it, it lines me up to be a better senior engineer over top of them. Ooh. That's bad. The entire top layer of my, of my uh, ceramic blanket started to separate. And I don't think that's supposed to be what happens there. Uh-oh. Okay, you're gonna go there. You're gonna come undone and you're gonna go over there. My uh, thumb screws. Okay, so hopefully Refractory cures that up a little bit. I knew I should have started in the center more, but oh well. we're gonna try to patch this location here in between our burners. It's really hard to reach some of these spaces, honestly. I don't want any harsh peaks on it if I can avoid them because harsh peaks are going to trap heat or they're going to attract heat and they're going to become much hotter, much faster. Doesn't need to be perfect, but you know, it's my, my first propane forge. I'd like it to look nice before I m m go through and mess it up, you know? <laughs> so I guess if, uh, if you're looking for advice from me on career pathing, don't. <laughs> oh, wow. The moisture is already leaching through and turning part of the blanket brown. That's fun. That means I'm working on a real time crunch here. That's not my favorite. This is actually fairly therapeutic. Um, I'm not, 
I'm not a non-committal person by any stretch. Um, but like when it comes to this stuff, I'm just like, I'm so not confident in my ability to not screw it up. It's a lot of knots in there. Uh, I'm so unconfident when it comes to when something is so new to me that it, it's almost honestly paralyzing sometimes. Uh, shout out to all of you that face the same problem. Um, Cause I, I, I don't need it to be immaculate. Like I don't, I don't need what I do to be perfect. I need it to, to suffice, but man, it makes me so nervous to start a new project. I mean, honestly, I, I'm not blaming anybody, but like, especially in front of y'all, because like, I want to do right. I want to make it, I want to make it work the way it's supposed to work. But I also like, I want to enable you as well, but in, in order to enable your, your skills to grow and, and your work to, to thrive, I've got to try to do my best, right? That's, that's kind of part of the deal. If you're going to try to try to offer knowledge, share, whatever, you kind of got to be somewhat confident. And maybe, maybe that's actually why, um, maybe that's actually why I didn't get my promotion is because I'm just not confident. Not to say that I didn't get screwed because I absolutely got screwed. Um, but in the interest of not blaming other people and trying to see a different perspective, maybe it's my lack of confidence that is the major, the major reason why I got denied. And that I can, I can take that again. My, my frustration really comes in a lack of, or my, I guess not again, my frustration really flares up when I'm not communicated with. Like, it's not hard to just talk to somebody. At least not, I don't think it's that hard to talk to me. I do have a tendency to be a little bit unpredictable with some of the things that I react with. But I don't think I have a tendency to take my anger out on people at least no more than is normal. Um, so I would just, I would hope that people would be honest with me and be like, Steven, your content sucks. Like, All right, but okay, but how do I make it better? That's where you come in. That's where that comment section comes in. And this is not the, the YouTuber like call to action, like, comment, subscribe. I mean, do that if you want to. Um, I'm gonna keep making videos as long as I'm enjoying making videos, you know? Um, but it, it really does come into play here where if, if you want to see other content or if you're interested in this content, leaving a like, leaving that comment gives me a lot of feedback. Like YouTube, YouTube legit kind of sucks when it comes to like engagement with off or uh, with uh, a viewership or an audience or whatever. Like it, it kind of really sucks because like you watch the video and especially if you're on mobile, you have to go through and enable this whole menu to view comments. And it, it's kind of an ordeal to try to just get to it. Yeah, I get it. it, it two, two clicks, oh, two, two buttons, it, 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 it's ordeal. But yeah, sure. It's two buttons, but it's that much of a departure from the current content. That's, uh, I think, one thing that Twitch makes incredibly easy, and not just because it's synchronous, but because synchronous being you're, you're watching the content and interacting at the same time in real time, you know? Um, but Twitch gets it right because the panel is like integral. The, the chat channel is integral to the stream. YouTube, it's, it's, almost, it's almost an afterthought. And with all the botting and all of the, the other crap, like I don't get the bots because I'm not like a huge channel, but like on Instagram, again, still not a huge channel, but Instagram bots are out in droves. They're like mosquitoes. It's so frustrating. Anytime I post something with, uh, with like the YouTube tag in it or, or 
anything like that. Or, you know, back when I was streaming the Twitch tag, it'd be like, promote it here. Oh, great. For a great opportunity, DM us at this channel. It's just like, dude, no. <laughs> but it, it's, it's hard to have, it, it's honestly painful trying to find ways to engage the audience and share with them your passions when they have to deal with all the bots, all the garbage, all the stuff, like lack of user experience design, which is YouTube's fault on the comment section side of things. So what's happened is part of the, uh, the refractory is starting to dry. And when I try to put more there, it just ends up peeling off. Stuff smells so weird. I don't, I don't even know how to describe it to you. It just smells weird. Oh no. Every time I try to fix it, I make it worse. It's like a bad relationship. Uh, I love my wife. <laughs> that, that implies that I'm in a bad relationship. I am not at all. I absolutely love my wife, my kids. You know what it smells like? It smells like mesquite. And maybe that's why it's so weird to me because it's like, that legitimately smells like barbecue <laughs> and it shouldn't. I think this is why they tell you to use a brush. It ends up pulling the refractory out of place and it leaves a gap all the way down to the blanket, which really sucks. That might be what coat number two is for though. Much better. I think we figured it out finally. If my video quality here is not as good as far as the, the filmography or the videography, I apologize. I'm not really sure how to frame this stuff properly. Uh, if you don't know me, I generally tend to not like, it, like getting my hands like muddy or, or like I don't mind them being dirty I cannot stand them being like sticky and this stuff is sticky muddy mess can I see at all what's happening here okay got a couple of gaps down here man I guarantee that's what that next coat is gonna be holy cow Hey, uh, y'all over at, uh, at, uh, Mr. Volcano. I don't know if you have a video on assembling this. If you don't, you should make one. Because I don't know if I'm even doing this remotely right, honestly. Um, there are places where the refractory is peeling out. And I don't know if this is supposed to be like super smooth. I know it's probably not supposed to be like incredibly rough, but like this is what I would call like a polished process. And it's probably about as good as I'm gonna get it for the first pass. Um, push comes to shove, I do have a repair set or a repair kit for cracking that I could use for patching. But I think coat two is supposed to take over uh, at this point and let it go, you know? I think that's probably what's supposed to happen. Now, I have a lot of refractory cement just uh, hanging out on my bench here, which is, I guess, less than ideal. Um, let's go ahead and uh, move the forge over to the stand. Like I said, I'll try to get some photos of it for you uh, soon. So it's been a, a little bit of a crazy little while. You know, I, I'm recording this video the same day that I finished the forge stand, if you couldn't tell by the shirt. Um, I, uh, I have time today, it's Father's Day, and my wife asked me what I wanted to do. I said, I don't know, but I gotta get some recording done. And I should have known, and I should know, that when I say that I've gotta get some recording done, it means that I'm gonna be recording all flipping day. <laughs> and it hasn't been all day, it's been all afternoon, honestly. Um, but that's okay. I, I'm enjoying this and I, I am thoroughly pleased with how things are turning out. Uh, this is not an amazing 
job uh, as far as like I, I haven't done it right, but or I haven't done it perfectly, but I imagine that they would know that there's no way that somebody is going to come into this fresh and do it right uh, unless they made it really stupid or, or made it really stupid proof. So uh, hopefully these instructions live up to my expectations. Um, I don't have much uh, refractory left, if any, um, which is good, I think. Um, so hopefully I did it right. I, I did it as well as I could. So hopefully at some point I'll be able to talk to you about what I think I could have done better, what I could have done uh, different, and what I would recommend in the future for you. Uh, hopefully the weather is going to be decent. Again, this stuff has to be curing at 50 degrees Fahrenheit um, or higher. Um, but I think overall this is probably going to turn out just fine. I have uh, another round of the refractory that I have to do. That is the uh, 1.5 or 1.25 pounds of refractory and 5.53 fluid ounces of refract or of water. Uh, that will be mixed up together in the same bucket, and then I will probably go be going through and covering up all of those little patch holes, things like that, to get to the desired thickness. Make sure that it's fitting the way it's supposed to. If I find that it's pulling away from the blanket any further, uh, I can probably use my maintenance stuff if need be. Um, hopefully this goes well. If it doesn't, um, I, I guess I'll email them and see what I. Do did wrong and probably have to pay for a patch kit. I might have to start forging in my coal forge again, which is not a problem. It's just not going to do what I want it to do, I don't think, uh, as far as making hardy tools. So I also think that the refract or the uh, uh, thermal brick that came with the forge has to go in the bottom of this anyway, so that may not be the end of the world. We'll, uh, we'll see, right? So um, yeah, hopefully we'll be forging soon, hopefully within a couple of weeks. I'm not going to ask you to hold me to that because I don't know when I'll be able to forge exactly, but I'm itching to. I'm really itching to just start making things, uh, specifically some hardy tools to enable me to actually start making other stuff, but I'm, I'm just not there yet. So I apologize for the long drawn out process that this has been. But today was refractory day part one. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that. You know, that that's... There's not a whole lot left in the bucket, which means I think I used as much as I could within reason, you know? So, like I was talking about earlier, uh, if you like this, go ahead and uh, like the video <laughs> if you enjoyed what you saw. Uh, if you are concerned about something I did or if you've got ideas on how I could have done it better, go ahead and uh, let me know in the comments below if you've got suggestions for future videos or ideas that you want me to forge. Please keep them simple. I'm just learning how to forge, um, but I'll take some consideration or I'll take uh, suggestions into consideration. If you are interested in what tools I use, please let me know. I can absolutely do that, uh, whether it be the actual shop tools or the recording tools. Uh, happy to do both. And uh, if you are new here or you're you know, you've been watching a couple of videos and you haven't hit the subscribe button. Really recommend you do that. Not only does it kind of tell me that more and more people are interested in this content and interested in what I'm putting out, it also lets me, uh, well, it also lets me, oh, no, it also lets YouTube know that you want to see more of these videos. Uh, the bell icon will notify you if you hit bell and then hit all. Uh, it will notify you of every video that I post. I don't post frequently. I post like once a week at the most. So don't, don't worry, you're not gonna get like 35 videos in a day. I'm, I'm, I can't do that. Um, so there's way too much that goes into this stuff alone for me to be able to do that. So those are your three avenues of interaction at the time. You can also follow me over on Instagram and on TikTok if you want to. Uh, I don't post on Instagram that much, but I do on TikTok usually weekly. So hit me up there. And once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, have a good one.